All right, everybody. This is a quick introduction video. Um, this is for the Im Im Immunology and Hematology module. Uh, this is Dr. Strong, your host <laughs> today. Um, and I want to do a quick introduction video just to talk about antimicrobials in general before getting into the two lectures that we have, you guys have, um, for um, this module. So first, I want to start off by... Can you all hear that music in the background? One second. All right, sorry about that. We have the windows open. I have the windows open because it's a nice out. And we live near a car wash, and there's all these signs that say, do not play loud music. So what do people do? They sit up there. and So I got to go tell the guy, get the out of here. No, I didn't tell him anything. <laughs> anyway, so I first want to start with um, something that will probably help you more on your um, rotations and less so here. But it's it's a reference. It's called the Sanford Guide. Um, so this isn't anything you necessarily need to go run out and purchase right away. It won't necessarily help you with my class and be successful, but I think it will be very beneficial. So this helped uh, myself and my wife um, when she was on rotation. So she, I think I told you that she's a physician. So when she was a medical student, when I was a pharmacy student, we both relied heavily on the Sanford Guide. Um, specifically, they have so they have print and digital subscriptions. Um, we both like the, the feel of the book. Um, so if you go down here to products, click on print guides, you can see the different um, books they have. The one that today I wanted to highlight was antimicrobial therapy. It's the 47th edition now. I know some of y'all's uh, bigs had bought it this last year, and I highly recommend it. It's a great, great reference for antimicrobial therapy. We had the pocket edition because, like I said, we were we're just more hands-on. Um, it's just more our style. But um, a lot of our classmates, um, both in pharmacy school and medical school, they would use this on their phones or whatever, their smart devices, whatever, iPads, whatever, um, with the digital subscriptions. Um, so these I like a lot. Um, and just, you know, too, so under solutions, if you go to students in schools, um, you do potentially qualify for discounts. So... When we were students, we were able to get these as, at, at some discounted prices. So um, if you go there, click there, and it's like you contact customer service or whatever. Um, and then they, I mean, they sell it too. This is the, the company's website, the SanfordGuide.com. Um, but you could get it on Amazon or wherever. And some of your bigs may have it on PDF. They may be able to share it with you or whatever. Um, but I feel like it's a really great resource for... Um, for antimicrobial therapy. So that's just an FYI. That's just more for kind of help you on rotations. Um, some of the students bought it last year and they used it during my course. Some didn't. So um, I would ask your upperclassmen what they thought as far as if it helped them or not um, with my course. So, um, and I don't have, I don't have the PDF version or electronic version, but I did find um, some, some antibiotic spectra that is, this is what the book, some of the, Part of the book looks like this, and this is part of the book that I liked um, a lot. Um, but this shows here on the left-hand side, um, there is the organism. So there is gram-positive, gram-negative, uh, miscellaneous, anaerobes, right? And then on top, we have the antimicrobials up here. So and we'll go through all these different, but carbapenems, for example. And then if you look across, so you're, let's say you get a... Um, you get a culture back and it's for MSSA, the staph aureus, um, that is methicillin susceptible. I go across here and you can see whatever there's a plus sign, so like methicillin, for example, it's versus MRSA is methyl methicillin resistant, so it doesn't cover that. So this, I like this as a, as a student because it helped me um, see if an antibiotic was appropriate or not that was being prescribed. Um, this also gives you an idea too, so if you see a lot of pluses in a couple different categories, then you can see it's, it's a broader spectrum. So for example, fluoroquinolones, um, you'll notice like moxifloxacin, it hits gram-positive microorganisms, and then it also has hits gram-negative microorganisms. So therefore, moxifloxacin is a broad spectrum antibiotic. And specifically, it's a fluoroquinolone. It's one of the many uh, fluoroquinolones. So, and a couple other pages too, but so they have IV cephalosporins, oral cephalosporins based on generation, which we'll see, we'll get into that in lecture. Um, and then same thing, aminoglycosides, macrolides. So again, it's organisms here. Um, and so typically when you're first prescribing, um, or if you guys are on rotations with an ID, uh, infectious disease doctor or uh, internal medicine, or whatever, if you don't know, if you have you sent out for cultures, but you don't know you want to do an empiric therapy, you want a broader spectrum antibiotic. And so you'll typically pick something. Well, first of all, that's the hospital has. And second of all, it, 
has a broad spectrum, so meaning it covers gram positive, gram negatives. And if you're concerned about anaerobes, then make sure it has anaerobic coverage as well. And then when you get your cultures back, you can then see, oh, the cultures are growing um, specifically, where was the, what was my example earlier? Oh, the staph, so staph aureus is specifically. So we're concerned about MR, so staph aureus is methylism resistant. We're concerned about MRSA. So let's look across here and let's see what hits it. So vancomycin, that's a big one you'll see in the hospitals um, being used for MRSA. Um, but then that's, that's the way to use those charts. So you'll see charts like this in the book. There's a ton of other great charts. Um, I like this one, these charts, because I'm a pharmacist, I guess. I don't know. And my wife liked a lot of the other charts that they had in the book, um, being a prescriber, which would be relevant for USPAs. So she liked the ones that it, it's, um, it would give the organ, so the organ that's uh, in infected. So let's say, you know, lungs or whatever. And then it goes through and it tells you kind of good things to prescribe first line, second line, third line for, let's say, a, a lung infection or if a bone infection or whatever. So she liked that a lot. I, it was funny because I went to farm school before she went to medical school. And um, I I was telling her about this chart. I was like, yeah, it's going to be great. You're going to be using it all the time and stuff. And then <laughs> after a few rotations, she's like, I rarely look at that chart that you liked. Why are you telling me to use So I was like, oh, I guess it's, you know, that's one of the differences between <laughs> the pharmacist's approach versus um, the physician's approach. But um, but anyway, so I just want to give you an idea of, of some of the stuff you may see in that book. But uh, And then, like I said, I'm barely scratching the surface. Tons of great stuff in that book. I can't highly recommend it enough. And so, student, I'm not sponsored by Stanford, the Stanford Guide. I wish I was, but I'm not getting any money from it or anything. This is just a pure recommendation. It's not like, this uh, recording is brought to you by the good people at Stanford Guide. No, uh, make sure you buy all their stuff. No, I, I wish. I mean, that'd be nice. I would disclose it too, but I don't get any money from the Stanford Guide. Um, I just think it's a really great, my wife and myself think it's good for medical students, PA students, and uh, for pharmacy students. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, maybe not buy right now, but I would definitely think of seriously about getting it before your rotations. I also wanted to show you guys, again, this is more FYI, this will help you more on your rotations and less so um, explicitly for my test. But when, you out are, when you're out on practice, um, most hospitals, especially bigger facilities, I, I mean, I can't make promises for some of these rural hospitals out in like Rio Grande City or some of these rural places, um, they may not have these, but definitely like in McAllen, Harlingen, Brownsville, San Antonio, Houston, whatever, all the big, big cities in Texas, um, they'll have what's called an anti-biogram. So I'd recommend that you try to find one of those once you start at a new facility, a new hospital. And this is good because, so these are from uh, Utesca, University of Health Science Centers in San Antonio um, from 2014. So this is out of date, but so if you're up at that facility, for example, it'd be good to have this. So this is an inpatient anti-biogram, which is antibiotic susceptibility of common organisms. So this would tell you, um, this is related to um, resistance. So the local resistance, patterns. I, I'm going to um, talk a little bit more about that more in, in pre uh, sorry, future lectures, but um, this is going to show you what antibiotics. So here's the antibiotics here on this on the left hand side. And then these are the, the bugs. These are the anti, um, I'm sorry, these are the mic microbes here at the top. And then it'll show you so like, for example, it'll show you how effective they are in percentages. So for example, ampicillin is effective, pretty effective with Enterococcus here, you can see that. Um, not effective here when it comes to Klebsiella. So we have zero, it does, so do not prescribe it for Klebsiella, um, and, and so on and so forth. So you can get an idea of what specifically for that institution um, are you gonna get a, um, you know, have an effect, effective um, medication. And they have, so the zero means that um, it's not good, and then the little dash just means that it doesn't hit it or they don't have data for it, so. Um, they have that for the inpatient, and then they also have it, same facility, antibiogram for the outpatient. So you can see here it's outpatient. So again, you're at an outpatient clinic associated with Utesca. Um, penicillin, what does it hit in that area? You can see penicillin is pretty weak. Maybe not a good idea to prescribe penicillin for outpatient patients if you're concerned about these, um, for example. But um, so these are really nice, and these will definitely vary region from region. So um, I went to pharmacy school in Austin, and my classmates, we were sent all over the state. So it was kind of interesting, kind of nerdy, I guess, pharmacy student style, but to see these anti-biograms from different, so like fr I had friends up in Dallas or whatever, and then I was down in the Rio Grande Valley. I did my rotations down in uh, um, the Rio Grande Valley, and you know, there's different 
local resistance patterns and they, they should be reflected on these antibiograms. So I also wanted to show you that. And again, just FYI, um, don't worry about studying this or anything for the test, but just this is something I would look out for when I'm on rotations. Um, and then this is also something I want to talk about too. So I will in lecture talk about formularies. Um, and so most major institutions, hospitals, uh, bigger clinics, et cetera, will have uh, what's called a formulary. And um, what that is just basically it's a list of drugs that they c carry. And this is for all categories. So it'll be like, you know, antihypertensive medications. And then there's uh, ACE inhibitors, which is anti antihypertension medication. And then this is the this is the ACE inhibitor we carry at this facility. Um, and they'll, they'll provide a list there. So that's something else to check out. So formularies are important when you're prescribing too. Um, so is something on formulary, is it off formulary? So I got this again, this was out of San Antonio. I forgot which hospital it was, but um, this is just showing. So if it has a Y next to it, it is restricted. So it's not on their formulary. So like cefepime, for example, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can never prescribe it or that you can never um, give it. It's just, it's not preferred. It's um, And it's usually because of financial reasons or because they feel like there's something comparable that, that, you know, there's there's a few things, like with ACE inhibitors, there's a few ACE inhibitors in the same category that are deemed to be, you know, pretty much the same. And so we're going to carry this one. We're going to carry lisinopril, for example. So you can't prescribe enalapril um, without special permission or whatever, like unless, you know, you have a, a specific rationale. And you'll notice, too, some of these that are restricted are because of the cost. So these are out of date. Oh, this is from UTMB. I'm sorry. Um, this is, so this is out of Galveston. That's what it was, sorry. Um, but you'll notice the more expensive one, so like lin linazolid, is $322 a day, so it's restricted. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't ever prescribe that at UTMB. It's just going to be something that you're going to have to, you know, have a rationale versus something like, uh, this is Bactrim, generic Bactrim. It's a dollar a day, so that's really cheap. It's one of the cheapest ones, yeah. Um, so probably no restrictions on there. Um, but then you would want to look at the other factors. Like you'd want to think, well, is this going to hit the microorganisms that I'm concerned about? So is there appropriate coverage? And then for my local facility, is there, um, uh, is it resistant or not? Or, you know, wh what does the antibiogram look like? Um, but you'll notice too that they have, so here it says, please refer to UTMB online formula. So they have a formula online, uh, which is nice. Not all facilities have that available online. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so, for example, UTMB does. But that was the other thing. Again, just FYI, just kind of so you have a foundation of uh, for anti the antimicrobials. The other thing I want to talk about too that um, I don't necessarily have a slide for or anything or any visual to show you, but is just that students in the past have been um, a little bit confused about how to pick an antibiotic. Um, so there's a, unfortunately there's not really a super easy straightforward answer um, it, you have to take into a, account a number of different factors um, one you need to take into account the patient so the age of the patient the health of the patient um, the kidney health of the patient right their their overall health and then their specific organ health um, is something then you also want to take into consideration what are you targeting so what type of do they have a bone infection do they have a lung infection that's that's another thing you need to think about um, and then what type of bug, quote unquote, so what type of microorganism is, are they infected with? So is it a gram positive? Is it gram negative? Is it aerobic? Is it anaerobic? Um, those are things too that you're going to have to take in consideration. Um, and then you're going to take in the patient specifically. So sometimes patients are allergic to certain medications. So you'll hear about uh, penicillin allergies, for example. You have to take that in consideration. You'll have to take the cost into consideration. Unfortunately, that is just the modern medicine, you have to think about cost sometimes. So is it on the formula? Is it not? And then you also have to think about resistance. Has the resistance built up to this antibiotic? Um, and then specifically, so it's a worldwide issue, unfortunately, antibiotic resistance, but then it's also, it's a local issue too, in the sense that you need to check out the antibiograms. And so resistance patterns in the Rio Grande Valley are probably going to be different than other parts of the country. Um, and then may even be different than other parts of the state. So um, multi, it's, kind of it's a multi-pronged approach i don't know if um if anyone was a debater but in, we debate did debate in high school we talked about multi-pronged arguments but anyway so it's a multi-pronged approach just meaning there's a, a lot of different factors you have to take in consideration and i'll hopefully with the pharmacology lectures will give you some kind of tidbits because there is some things you jump to like there are certain ones that are better for anaerobic coverage than others or there are some that are broader spectrum um and so hopefully you can start kind of getting an idea of that 
of those of those patterns. Um, and the other thing with anti-infectives is and antimicrobials, it is just it's a massive topic. So that's part of the reason I'm starting with it, and we're going to be revisiting it for the whole year. <laughs> so you'll be seeing we'll be talking about antimicrobials in farm one, farm two, and farm three. So because uh, you know, for better or for worse, um, you can have infections. You know, head to toe. Um, babies get infected, geriatric population gets infected, um, everyone in between, healthy, unhealthy people. Um, so anyways, it kind of, it touches everything. So that's, that's part of the reason I, want, I was wanting to start with it. Um, on that same note, so I'm kind of going a little bit out of order with pathophysiology. I'm going to actually have pathophysiology lecture posted here for you guys with my pharmacy lectures, just as an FYI, it's there so that if you want that patho at the same time, um, it, you can have it. And so I'm going to put links here. This is my, um, this is 5328 pharmacology. I'm going to put a link here to my recorded integrity lecture of patho. So if you want those slides, what you're going to do is you're going to go to, I guess your course, I don't know what yours looks like, but you need to go to 5306, which is Dr. Faruqi's course. And you need to go here under course content. Um, click on the pathology folder and then you're going to scroll down to see this is what my videos look like by the way i'll put the little symbol and i'll put a link and you click there and then you can watch my video so then you scroll down to infectious diseases let's open this up and then chapter 12 mechanisms of, of infection so i've already given this present or i'm sorry i've already recorded this presentation mechanism of infections based on these slides um, but they will be in my i'll i'll do a link integrity link like I just showed you. I'll do one of these links in 5328, which is pharmacology. And I will post it, let's see, 5328, make sure I'm clicking on the right stuff here. And then I will post it in the immunology hematology module. So it'll be there again if you want it at the same time. So students in the past have um, have liked that when they you they get the patho and the pharmacy and they, they line up and they match. So just look for that. There will be a um, patho one. And just remember, you have to, I won't have well, you know what? I'll go ahead and put the PowerPoint here. I'll put I'll add the point PowerPoint right next to the lecture, um, but just know that the PowerPoint is from Dr. Faruqi. Um, it is is his uh, PowerPoint. So, so anyway, so hopefully some of that stuff helped you guys. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Um, thanks again for your attention. Talk to you soon. Have a good day.